Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with Detective Louis Burke, of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police in Quebec, who searches for the person who killed his fellow officer, Christian Naylor. The killer is an enigmatic psychopathic serial killer, who calls himself the Sandman. While talking on the phone, he is approached by a group of thugs, who try to attack him, but Burke quickly beats them up. He goes looking for the killer in an abandoned mansion in Los Angeles. Inside, he discovers a series of dead bodies. He then finds a closet, and after he opens it, he is attacked by the killer with a knife. Burke shoots the killer numerous times until he falls lifeless. Sixteen months later, Burke's supervisors call him into their office, to assign him a new case. He must investigate a series of deaths at California's Harrison State Prison, that have turned into a scandal and are jeopardizing his re-election. While Burke will play an inmate, attorney Amanda Beckett will play his wife. Supervisors inform him that he will be imprisoned on a charge of armed robbery, a highly respected crime in prison, so he should not have serious difficulties. In short, he has to go to the prison to find the mysterious killer who killed nine inmates and a prison guard. Burke says he will think about whether to accept the assignment or not, and leaves. Soon, he meets attorney Amanda Beckett, and discovers that she does not have much experience in the field. However, he informs her that he will accept the assignment. He goes undercover, and ends up in a state penitentiary. He gets to know the prison's tough warden, receives new clothes, and is then sent to his cell. Soon after, an inmate arrives, and tells Burke that he must pay for his bed. However, because he has no money, the inmate tells him that he can sell his body. When Burke refuses, the inmate threatens him with a pocket knife. The protagonist quickly disarms him, and grabs him by his clothes. The inmate becomes frightened, and the guard tells him that he can take any bed he wants. Later during lunch, an employee named Hawkins is threatened with a knife by a Mexican inmate. Burke steps in, but the Mexican inmate attacks him. A brief brawl breaks out between the Mexican gang, but guards quickly arrive to calm things down. Nevertheless, the Mexican inmate continues to threaten Burke that he will kill him. The protagonist approaches Hawkins during lunch, but the latter tells him that this is the table for black men. Although Burke saved him from a fight with the gang, neither he nor his cellmate want to talk about the recent murders. The next day, lawyer Beckett visits Burke in jail. The lawyer informs him that she has researched the prison killings, and assumes that it is in fact a gang. In addition, the lawyer reveals the name of the killer's latest victim, and Burke says he will go talk to his cellmate. Meanwhile, the prison warden and guards look at Burke suspiciously. No one else knows that Burke is an undercover agent. He tells the lawyer that he needs cash in prison. He points out that this is critical to his survival, and the lawyer promises to do so. One evening, while he is cleaning the floors, he is approached by two Mexican gang members. He knocks one down, and fights the second. He beats both prisoners and then returns to his cell. He receives a book from the lawyer, and inside it he finds the cash he needs. Later, he goes to talk to Hawkins, to find out more information about the killer. Burke says that the killer's last victim was a close friend of his, and he would like to know who is responsible for his death. Hawkins does not reveal much, but just tells him to go talk to the prison pimp. Burke's cellmate leads him to the pimp, where he pays him for the information. The pimp says that all of the killer's victims were killed the same way. In addition, he says Burke should go talk to the former cellmate of the killer's last victim. Later, as Burke cleans the floors, it is discovered that there is another victim. Soon, Burke manages to track down the last victim's former cellmate, who works in the infirmary, but he too refuses to talk. When Burke threatens him, the nurse admits that he has no idea what is going on, but that the guards are involved, and that an outside man is present. That evening, Burke calls the lawyer, and updates her on the situation. Shortly, with the help of the pimp, he receives the key to the archive. Then, thanks to Hawkins, he manages to sneak inside the office. He discovers Barrett's death certificate, wrapped in codes. Suddenly, he makes a noise that attracts the attention of a prison guard. The guard enters to check, but Burke is hiding on the attic floor. He begins to bleed, and some drops fall on the table, but Hawkins hides them with a cup. During the next meeting with the lawyer, Burke reveals that all of the killer's victims were newcomers. The victims were not in gangs or taking drugs. The lawyer mentions that she should check the database to find some detail that connects all the victims. Burke advises her to ask for help from a hacker friend named Tisdale, and hands over the archive codes to Beckett. Using the codes, Tisdale discovers that the codes lead to a file. However, the file requires an access code. Tisdale says he needs a day to find out the access code. One evening, Burke goes to the nurse's office, to ask the last victim's ex-partner a couple of questions. 
The nurse has obtained keys to the operation room and the storage room, where they can look for more clues. However, the nurse states that he is now in danger, because he talked, so Burke will have to defend him. While in his cell, a prisoner warns Burke that someone will try to kill him tonight. Meanwhile, Tisdale and the lawyer finally access the file, and find another code. The lawyer prints the code and leaves. She discovers that the file contains a list of all the victims, and all the information about them. The file consists of inmate identification numbers, followed by blood type. None of the inmates on the list have a history of drug offenses, and most are young first-time offenders. The lawyer also informed Burke that his name is on the file. So the killer intends to kill him soon. That night, a couple of men enter Burke's cell, and kill his cellmate. Burke was hiding under the bed, and fights the two men. When the prison guards arrive, they find Burke and his dead cellmate, so they think he killed him. The guards beat him, and take him to solitary confinement. The prison guard beats him again, and asks who he is. Later, a couple of men approach the prisoner who warned Burke of the attack. That night, the nurse notices someone approaching his cell. The men blame him for talking to Burke, and pour gasoline into his cell. The nurse begs them to stop, but it is too late. The individuals light a match, and burn the nurse alive. The lawyer makes another prison visit to Burke, but this time the security guards decide to inspect her. A security guard visits Burke and informs him that his wife, the lawyer wants to see him. He informs her of what happened to him, but then they end up having fun together. Later, he, with the help of Hawkins, breaks into the infirmary, and discovers many crates labeled medical waste, that are actually filled with human organs. Burke is shocked to discover that there is a new inmate, who is indeed the Sandman, and who did not die two years ago. That night, Burke is taken to the bathroom, and tied up by the Sandman. However, rather than killing him, the Sandman says he will reveal to all the other inmates that Burke is a policeman. Later, as Burke is being taken to his cell, the other inmates insult him, and threaten to kill him. When Hawkins learns of this, he feels disappointed, but Burke tries to explain that he is doing this to find the killer. Meanwhile, the lawyer goes to a party hosted by the state attorney general, Tom Vogler. The lawyer suspects that her boss, Ben Keen is responsible for the murders, and intends to inform Vogler of her theory. But just as she is ready to do so, she receives a phone call from Tisdale, who informs her that the person responsible for the murders is, in fact, Vogler. Vogler pulls out a revolver, and tells the lawyer that his wife needed a liver transplant, and when his money and influence were not enough to move her up the donor list in time, he hatched a plan to kill healthy prisoners, in exchange for their organs. After his wife's transplant, the doctor in prison continued the plan for profit. Vogler also admits that he sent Sandman to kill Burke, because it was too difficult for the other prisoners to kill him. Beckett escapes when Vogler's wife unexpectedly enters the room. Back in prison, Burke has installed two wires on the bars, to electrocute anyone who touches them. A prison guard approaches to tease him and tell him that the Sandman is coming to kill him. At that moment, Burke presses a button, and electrocutes the guard. Subsequently, he escapes from his cell, and the Sandman opens all the other cells to cause a riot. All the inmates begin to chase Burke as he runs. Shortly thereafter, he is restrained by prison guards, while the other inmates are locked in the corridor. Burke is taken to an office and beaten. Then the prison guard grabs a gun and prepares to kill him, but he tries to get through the door. The pimp and Hawkins help him escape the guards. Soon, Hawkins is wounded by an inmate, but the pimp saves him. Then the inmate attacks Burke with a dumbbell, but the protagonist easily kills him. Burke the pimp and Hawkins run away. At one point, they spot a crowd of inmates following them, and decide to take an elevator. The doctor who is killing inmates to sell their organs is surrounded. As the trio is about to exit the elevator, an inmate shoots Hawkins, and the pimp shoots the inmate, killing him. Burke then tends to Hawkins' wounds, but he tells him to escape with the pimp. Later, the prison warden finds Hawkins, and prepares to kill him. Just then, the pimp returns, and shoots the prison warden, again saving Hawkins. He then reaches Burke, and says he knows a way out of the prison. Nevertheless, the pimp is then killed by the Sandman with an axe. Subsequently, Burke chases Sandman to fight him. A fight ensues between them, with the inmates as spectators. Initially, Sandman prevails, and wins the fight, after which he runs away to hide. Burke finds him, and they resume the fight. The Sandman takes a light bulb, and breaks it to cut Burke. Suddenly, Burke starts beating the Sandman with his kicks. At one point, Sandman opens the door to the boiler room, but Burke reverses the situation, throwing Sandman into the fire with a kick. This seems to be the end for Sandman, 
but he emerges from the boiler room after a few seconds, badly burned. Burke lashes him with another kick, sending him flying backwards against a pillar, his skull impaled on a valve stem. Despite the fatal damage, the Sandman continues to joke that he cannot kill him. Burke responds by spinning his head, the valve stem finally kills him. The inmates quietly allow Burke to leave the prison, where he is reunited with Hawkins and Beckett. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.